I'm Rantasmo, and Slash Fiction Needs More Gay. It's often said that imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, so it's no real surprise that when many people really enjoy a TV show, a movie, or a book, they often feel the need to expand upon it through creative outlets. Long before the internet was invented, by Al Gore, we had what are known as fanzines, or non-professional magazines published by fans for fans on the topic of just about anything one can be a fan of. From music, to sports, to movies and TV shows, to... I don't know... Limes? In the case of fanzines related to fictional media, a portion of these were often dedicated to fan fiction, a term originally defined as any sort of amateur fiction, but presently used to describe fan-written stories that use the characters or setting of an existing work of fiction. You might be surprised to learn that fan fiction isn't exactly a modern phenomenon. People have been creatively retelling stories and co-opting established works of fiction all throughout history, and fanzines have been around since the invention of the printing press. But as human beings are wont to do with any art form, we eventually found a way to make it sexier. Enter slash fiction. Typically, slash refers to romantic pairings of same-sex characters from fictional media, usually male, and usually characters who wouldn't normally hook up. The prevalence of slash can be attributed to the fact that most fanfiction writers are women, and cater to a predominantly female audience. It pretty much has the same sort of appeal as yo ya ya yaoi. I am really never going to get used to saying that the right way. These days there's an abundance of slash fiction and art to be found on the internet, but it can all be traced back to fanzines and a starship named Enterprise. Yes, Star Trek. The fact that this show has such an interconnected and rabid fan community long before anyone knew what a Facebook was shows just how much influence it really had on fandom and pop culture. And no other show was more vital to the origin of Slash. The word Slash actually refers to the terminology used to describe the romantic pairings in a given work of fanfiction, and it all really started with Kirk slash Spock. And oh man, did female Trekkies ever want these two guys to but why is that exactly? Was it just their overwhelming sexual chemistry? Which admittedly is totally there. Or was it really just the fact that Kirk and Spock were arguably the most interesting characters on the show? I mean, if you're going to write a heterosexual romance with Star Trek characters, really your only options are Uhura or this chick. Since the advent of the internet, Slash has pretty much exploded. Name virtually any popular book, movie, or TV show. And chances are there exists a community of people who write stories where the dudes in it get busy with each other. Harry Potter, The Daily Show, Transformers, Saved by the Bell, The Bible... No, really. What I'm getting at here is that Slash is an overwhelming phenomenon. Many feel that Slash represents a desire among women to escape the throes of mainstream culture and heteronormativity, while others argue that the more romanticized, less realistic portrayal of homosexuality in Slash fiction inadvertently fetishizes and demeans the gay community. Let's be honest here, the vast majority of fanfiction is pretty terrible, but can you really say any different about the vast majority of pop culture? Pop culture by definition is designed to appeal to the lowest common denominator, and I think that slash fiction writers at least aspire to something higher than that, or at the very least gayer than that. And can you really blame them for wanting to inject a little queerness into what is essentially an overwhelmingly heterocentric culture? One thing is for certain, you can't fight slash. You can try, but you'll lose. Because simply put, there is nothing that can conquer the undeniable love between Harry and Draco, who in this scenario are also gothic catboys. <laughs>